Right then, welcome back to another fantastic episode of SGTV. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, share and like it as well. That'd be a good start. Like is a good one. It's always one of those things, isn't it, where, where there's not an unlike button, I think. No. Which no. is always well, a good thing. We, we would hope that the, the viewers wouldn't want to like indeed. our content. <laughs> we uh, would indeed hope that. We would endeavour to try our, our utmost to keep you entertained throughout this process. Today, we're going to be talking about RCDs in their application, more specifically around sort of time delayed as well. You know, we've launched a fantastic range of time delays. So if you haven't checked them out, uh, be sure to do when it comes to the Aleutian range. Where are we going to start today, Tim? Um, it might be worthwhile, Jake, just looking at um, the types of RCD that exist. Yes. We already know that we've got a type AC, mm -hmm. a type A, a type F, a type B. You can also get uh, a type B+, plus, but we're not going to talk about a B+. Plus. Uh, but types of RCD matter, and the selection of the type of RCD uh, for its specific, a specific purpose is essential. Very much so, yeah, indeed. So we're going to start in 531 uh, when we start to look at RCDs. There's a number of things uh, in here, unwanted tripping. And then down at the bottom here, we've got 531.3.3 when we come to, to types of, uh, of RCDs. So what we've seen this massive move and this massive drive away from type AC devices. I think first and foremost, we probably need to get out there and understand how they sit in the market now when it comes to EICRs, for example. Yeah. You know, What should guys be looking at when they're coming to sort of coding yeah. uh, a type AC yeah. RCD team? Yeah. I've been asked a number of uh, questions just like that uh, recently, Jake, and, and, and it is important. And I think it's one of those cases where the answer is it depends uh, and Jake sure. always Jake always likes it when I when I give him the answer it depends uh, be, because things are rarely black and white uh, so uh, for many years we've been installing type AC RCDs mm -hmm. are you suddenly going to say they're all wrong well that, that's the sort of question I'm asking and, and you're right it absolutely does depend you know we have to sort of first of all we need to sort of understand the system that they're situated in so you know is there this need to upgrade them to a, to a type a is there dc components well typically speaking you, you're sort of looking at every install now the, the point i'm trying to get to tim is does that actually make it unsafe now yeah um typically Personally, I would say that it doesn't necessarily make them unsafe mm -hmm. as of this moment. You may go, for example, there may be a Type AC uh, device in a, in a split load board, mm -hmm. uh, an RCCB. It may well be a, a Type AC if you go back far enough. And, and so you've got lighting circuits, you've got ring circuits, other types of circuits. And, and typically, it might be, if the lighting circuit is still old school, mm -hmm. um, there's very little on in terms of a DC component associated with it, there may be very little uh, on, on your socket outlets. And so that, that, that problem that can occur mm -hmm. perhaps hasn't caused a problem yet. And they've sat there very safely doing their job for donkey's years, and, and they will continue to do their job for donkey's years. Of course, if you're in any doubt, you can do a test. You can check that they're operating within the time frame that you want them to operate in. You can make a determination on any EICR. Well, is this still working? Well, the answer is yes, or the answer is no. Once those times start drifting north, you're going to be saying, we, I think we could do with a change. Just on the, on the times though, Tim, do, does it have, will it show up directly then as a result of DC components on there for the, for the length of time it takes to trip? Or is it the actual device itself that's going down the pan? Yeah. Um, Interesting question. I think for me, when you come to look at doing any tests, there's generally two types of test regimes that you can carry out when you do an EICR on, on an RCD of whatever type. You can do a ramp test. Most test instruments dealing with RCD testing will test uh, starting from a very low value of current and steadily moving up until you hit a certain current value rather than time value. And it'll tell you the current at which it's tripping at. Mm -hmm. Very indicative of, of where the RCD is in terms of issues around DC components. And so a ramp test is really useful. If you do test it at the normal times one and it's still tripping within 40 milliseconds, uh, and, and it's allowed to be more than that, isn't it, of course, but, but it's still tripping very rapidly, then it is actually doing its job still. And so irrespective of either side of that, the, the, the problems associated with the DC component have not blinded the RCD. 
Okay, so just touching back on then, we know that there's been a change to Amendment 2 when it comes to RCD testing. It is the one times test. I know you mentioned that a moment ago. 300 milliseconds. Let's put that into perspective of, of what we typically saw of the 40 milliseconds. If it's starting to get up to 150, 160, or maybe even 200, but we're used to seeing 40 milliseconds, are we now going to start to see that people are changing them more frequently because of that? They may do, but they shouldn't. Correct, yeah. They may do, but they shouldn't. The, the, the reality is a times one test is a times one test. The 40 millisecond was always related to a times five test. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, if you like, if you are in any doubt, then, then perhaps you can still do a times five test or you can look at doing that. that but that's not saying you should. Manufacturers sell good products. We do. Skullmore sells good products. And so when it comes out of the box, we expect it to work. Mm -hmm. You rightly expect it to work. Yeah. Uh, and, and so like you do with a circuit breaker or, or any other component, it works. Why can't we reasonably expect that to continue? I don't foresee that you will see times drifting north on RCDs. Well, that's probably a useful fact for you as a contractor that's sitting there listening in today or, or watching in. Um, purely on the basis that they still need to be trusting in ourselves as manufacturers and uh, the pieces of test equipment that they're using. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So type AC then, we're not really gonna see too much change there. We're sort of seeing that fading out. Yeah. New products coming onto the market. Let's move on to, to a type A then. Um, we're seeing this now being applied where there is that DC. This is, is this just the start of it? Or are we sort of saying, right, okay, we've, we've moved away from the Type A C now. We're looking at the Type A. The Type A is the one for us, and that's going to be sort of staple to what we're doing as, as contractors. I, th I, think, I think the Type A is going to be the workhorse uh, RCD going forward for many, many years. Yeah, I don't see it being any different. It, it does its job. It does it well. And, and it will just be that baseline RCD that, that, that Skolmore produces mm -hmm. in years to come. Yeah. Okay, so that's looking at the DC. Uh, I mean, we can go through all of these. We've got the, yeah. the, the Type F uh, in front of us here. It's basically an enhanced version of yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a Type A. Yes, it um, is. Yes, it is. Looking uh, more at sort of the DC side, though, when it comes yeah. to, to the Type I think it drifts up to about 10 milliamps, doesn't it? And, and it, uh, it picks up uh, issues around certain frequency change. But the Type B uh, is, is specifically there to, to deal with issues around higher frequencies. I certainly feel like this Type B is going to be the one that we're going to see when we have some sort of extreme circumstances, you know, whether you've got PV, battery storage, all of those types of things that are sort of inbuilt in the house. Whilst we're sitting here saying that Type A is the workhorse, I believe that Type B we will see more frequently yes. than we ever have before, purely on the basis that we are seeing a lot more DC components in there. It's just, you know, this, the, the Type A is up to a 6 milliamp. The, D, the, uh, the Sorry, the Type B obviously goes up, up to 10. Um, and believe it or not, the, the Type B is the only one that will actually trip if there is more than yes. the 10 milliamps yes. of DC as well. So it's important to, to know your onions when it comes to it's also, also, RCDs. It's also worth noting that if you're sticking your EV charger in, the Type B doesn't need an RDCDD uh, in addition to, whereas a Type A, a Type F will do. Mm -hmm. Great, great stuff. So moving on then, we've been through the types. Yeah. How do we sort of apply that then? What about the switch fuse spurs and, and, and they're like, we've seen that sort of 7288, which is BS7288, yeah. yeah. which is the, the standard that looks after uh, your RCD sockets and your RCD fuse connection units. That's absolutely right, um, yeah. How did they get missed in the, in the first instance? I think somebody blinked and they dropped out. I think probably there was a, a, a drifting away but actually, of, of, of ink. I, I've done some research, I've had a little look and it's, it, it's a funny one really because when you actually looked at the standard previously, it did mention that it did need to be protected upstream, kind of defeating the object yeah. of, the, of the device. Yeah. And which the standard for the 7288, I believe, has been changed now as well. Right. I, I, think, I think where the, the, uh, uh, an SRCD or an FCU RCD apply and work well is if, for example, you're going to uh, a premises and it's an existing installation and the client doesn't want the consume unit messed with and the ring circuit or the circuit supply and socket outlets is pre-existing and doesn't want it touching. 
then you, you might provide the option of breaking into that circuit at some point and, and su supplying an SRCD for uh, circuits or, or appliances that might be used outdoors, for example, Jake. And so you end up in a situation where you go, it's not ideal. Yeah, we'd really like to stick an RCD at the front end, but since the client's not, then this is the next best option, and at least it's providing an RCD for that outdoor work. And so there's there's merit in using an SRCD in the right place. Yeah, we're, we're not really making anything worse as no, such. We're actually no. improving the, yeah. the, the level of the circuitry. And again, we probably don't need to go through the, the in-depth for this. You, you'll be fully uh, versed with this. But it was just important to mention that 7288 is back into the yes, 7671. It is recognized by, yeah. by 7671. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Where else do you want to go, Jake? Uh, I'd like to go to selectivity. Selectivity, correct. Yeah. Selectivity. So, selectivity between RCDs, it seems to be cropping up more and more. Um, I know that when it comes to house builders yeah. uh, and people that are working out on site, we sometimes see that there is selectivity issues between the garage and the front end, yeah. which is yeah. the uh, main distribution board or main consumer unit within the property. Um, there is no selectivity. I've seen it recently in, in a property. My friend had a RCD inside his consumer unit and he had an RCD inside his garage unit. Both 30 milliamp? Both 30 milliamp, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there cannot be selectivity. In the end, both RCDs will see the same current mm -hmm. under a, a fault condition, an earth fault condition, and one or both or either could go, and you wouldn't have any way of knowing which one would go first. It typically is the one at the front end, though. Not exactly. necessarily. No, no, it doesn't. It, 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 it no, is that there is there is you toss a coin and and you toss it enough times it's going to come out fifty fifty. Um, it, there is no rhyme or reason to it. Yeah. Okay. So what do we need to do then, and what do we need to take into consideration when it comes to the selectivity of these RCDs? Well, you need to be looking at, at Regulation five three six dot four dot one dot four, and in there it gives some very clear guidance. What effectively it says is. Two things, you want a three times ratio. So effectively, Jake, for a 30 milliamp device, you need 100 milliamp upstream, mm -hmm. uh, and you want a time delay. So that upstream device, even the times three isn't enough, there needs to be a pause before it thinks of operating. Okay, so why would the 100 milliamp not be enough if you didn't have the time delay because of the, the selectivity between the 30 and the 100? Um, why would that then need the time delay? Because in the end, that current that will be caused due to the earth fault may still be more than enough to trip the 100 milliamp device anyway. Okay. And so suddenly you're in the same issue with the two 30 milliamp devices. They're both seeing the same current and it's both within their time characteristics to operate. Uh, so you've got to shift the time characteristic somehow, and you do that by putting a time delay in. Does that sort of create a problem, though, when we start to look at more domestic setting, you know, when we start to look at the cables that are buried in the wall, then that would have to be something that didn't need 30 milliamp protection? Or does that almost supersede well, it? Yeah, that, that, you, you have to start thinking differently. So, so suddenly you're in a place where you, you're, you're going to have to think about putting in uh, RCBOs for those circuits that, that, that require them. And, and so you're drifting away from whether you need an RCCB anyway, because it's not helping you. Mm -hmm. And so you still end up with an issue around the 100 milliamps. So you still got to think about something along those lines. But perhaps a better solution than thinking about selectivity is to go, well, hang on a minute. Let's go our CBO route uh, and individual circuits. When you've got a TT arrangement, you can't dodge it. And, and so you've got to have uh, uh, an RCD, and you may need to let it drift out to a 300 milliamp or even a 500 milliamp device, uh, but it's still got to be time delayed. So I think we're, we're, we're getting to a point here, we're getting, getting to a, a bottleneck where we're saying, actually, this needs to be time delayed, regardless of whether it's 100, 300, 500. Yeah. Um, we can't get around that. So it's not a case of just necessarily putting a 30 milliamp in at the front, uh, at the, the bot downstream, and then putting 100 upstream of it, that time delay is absolutely critical when it comes to um, selecting your devices. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right, Jake. Absolutely right. The other thing I want to pick up is about RCCBs. It's yeah. interesting that you sort of, you mentioned that and the need for them to have this protection upstream as well. Yeah. So we can't just have an RCCB because of the overcurrent that sits in, what well, doesn't sit inside it, should I say. It has to be then be upstream. So we need to be mindful 
yeah. of that. Yeah, an RCCB to 61008 uh, uh, does not have internally the means of overload protection. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, you can't have normal currents that exceed its rating. So if it's an 80 amp device, it can't take more than 80 amps. Uh, and so when you start thinking about, well, what overload protection do I then have? Well, you're starting in a consumer in a domestic premises to then say, well, actually it's my main fuse that's acting as the cutout. Mm -hmm. And that then becomes uh, the overload protection device. Under that one. So that's in, that's indeed that's indeed. So five three six dot four dot two o two is is where you need to be looking. But absolutely right. And and manufacturers will give you guidance on that. But they're all going to say the same thing. Uh, they're going to say do not exceed uh, the rating of the RCCB. Uh, and 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 if if you are going to be heading that way, then you need to have. Uh, an upstream device that can provide that. I think uh, this this came about under the 18th edition, actually. Where there's a lot of rumours ch chucked about where you needed to have 100 amp RCCBs on both sides. Um, it's about the design, really, isn't it? You need to be conscious of, of how you're designing it and understanding exactly uh, what devices are going to be plugged in after that, whether it be MC uh, MCBs, et cetera. How, mu how much is that cumulative load on that bank of... Uh, of yeah. Uh, devices, including the RCCB. Yeah. And the key area in that design is to, is to ask how, how much heating load is there. And it's heating load that's going to drive current values north. I mean, it's interesting, really, when you think about, on average, how much each consumer uses. We were having this discussion uh, yeah. a short time ago, and we were saying about the average for consumers is around 8 amps. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe Maybe 10 amps. Yeah. Um, so... Is this actually a problem? It, 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 it depends. The answer is it depends. <laughs> because on average, if you take a 1,000 households, on average, they may take 10 amps. But in particular, they don't. There'll be some that take 40 amps, 50 amps. There'll be some that take 3 amps. There'll be some that are on holiday and nothing's getting drawn. Now, there's a whole range of things. So when we use the term on average, it's a certain figure and you go, well, do we need it? And the answer is yes, because there will be premises where there's a lot of heating loads, there is a lot of stuff going on, and suddenly you've got a problem. It is not happening all the time all over the place. Um, uh, it, 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 it's a rare event, but it has happened. Mm. I think that's it. I think there's definitely an education piece around our yeah, CDs. It's, yeah. it's sort of moving away from the norm when it comes to, especially the time delayed side of things. I think, again, you know, we're seeing more extensions on people's houses. We're seeing more garages or houses being built with separate garages re requiring that separate supply. You've also got things around uh, altered frequencies of, of, of certain circuits. And so you're having to deal with those things. And of course, with, with, with the spread of, of RCDs, so in a domestic premise, you've got to have an RCD on the lighting circuit now. You've got to have an RCD if you've got outside uh, uh, lighting and so, so on and so forth. So there's a whole range uh, of, of uses of an RCD. And it's interesting. It, it reminds me of when RCDs were first brought in. It's a wee bit like how, how AFDDs are brought in. They're sort of recommended. And then suddenly for an RCD, it was, well, you need to have them to supply outdoor uh, loads. And, and then you need to have them for a bit more and a bit more. And, and of course, as time's developed, you would recognize that they actually do perform a good uh, function. Most definitely, most definitely. With that in mind, we're going to wrap it up there, I think, and, and we're just touching on the RCDs and application, including the, the time delay. Tim just mentioned about the outdoor lighting. Stay tuned. We're going to find out a little bit more specifics around 714 when it comes to outdoor lighting and RCDs. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like, and share this video. Hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Take care. See you now.